This video will show how to drape an image or picture over a three-dimensional surface. We'll be using the sample data that comes with the Rockworks product in case you'd like to follow along. Locate and select the imagery option within the main menu. Click on the sub-option titled Drape. When the Drape image menu appears, click on the image file option and select the file that contains the image you want to drape over a given surface. In this example, I'll select a file called tankfarmairphoto.bmp. Next, we need to define the surface over which the image is to be draped. Given that surfaces are stored as grid models, we must select the name of the grid model that defines the surface. If you don't have any surfaces within your project folder, you'll need to stop here and create one. Assuming, however, that you do have a grid model in the current project folder, please select it. In my case, I'll select the grid model titled surface.grd. This next item, the layer name, is the title that will appear within the Rockplot 3D data tree. It doesn't really matter what you enter for the title since it's readily changeable within Rockplot 3D. Now the transparent color is used to restrict the visible portion of the draped image to something of interest. We'll address this later on within this video, but for now, let's uncheck it and move on to the next item being Vertical Offset. This option is used to vertically offset the draped image relative to the actual surface in order to eliminate any possible interference conflicts between the draped image and a corresponding surface diagram. We'll also discuss this in more detail later on in the video. The last item in this menu is the reference cage. That's the 3D annotation that is used to show the coordinates around the three-dimensional boundaries of a diagram. We'll leave this unchecked in order to keep the diagram as uncluttered as possible. Now, let's press the process button and see what happens. After a few seconds, you'll see the air photo draped over the reference surface. Another way to state this is to say that the pixel elevations for the image have been set to the corresponding elevations defined within the grid model. Okay, let's go into some more detail about two important options that I glossed over during the previous exercise. To illustrate the usefulness of the transparent color and the vertical offset, we've created a case study that involves the draping of multiple images, specifically an air photo, an AeroMag contour map showing only an anomalous feature, and a land ownership or lease map. All of these images will be draped over the reference surface shown at the bottom of this diagram. Now if we were to drape the AeroMag map over the grid surface and combine it with the draped air photo, we won't see it. That's because every pixel within the two diagrams occupy exactly the same coordinate space. And in this case, the draped air photo won out because it's plotted last, at least in this example. If we were to vertically shift the draped AeroMag image upwards by 10 units, we now see the AeroMag with the draped air photo peeking out below. If we now enable the transparency feature for the AeroMag, and set the transparent color to white, we see just the anomalous contours floating slightly above the draped air photo. The same considerations apply to the lease map. If we plot it as an opaque surface, it will cover the arrow mag and the draped air photo. On the other hand, if we offset it vertically upwards by 15 units and activate the transparency option with a white transparency color, voila! So between the vertical offset feature and the transparency feature, we've got two tools that when used together allow us to display quite a bit of information. Specifically in this example, morphology, surface features from imagery, a magnetic anomaly, and land ownership. That's a lot of stuff, especially when we combine it with subsurface data such as borehole logs, stratigraphic surfaces, and so on. As you probably noticed by now, the DRAPE program assumes that your images correspond to the exact dimensions of your project area as defined within the project dimensions region within the main Rockworks screen. So you're probably asking yourself, how often do I have the luxury of dealing with multiple images and scan maps that are all set to exactly the same dimensions? 
That's a good question. But don't worry, we've got you covered in a separate video titled How to Rectify Images. Thanks for watching.